like it. Well, welcome to episode four of Behind the Raw, the official podcast of the West Tigers, where we give it to you straight, where we kick speculation into touch and where we learn more about the stories and the people uh, behind this great club. Our guest this week, 249 first grade games. He played with the Magpies for four seasons, nine seasons with West Tigers. Um, and you'll find most pub trivia quizzes, there will be a question if it's about rugby league or West Tigers, who scored the very first try for West Tigers. It is this fella here. He played um, City of Origin. Very unlucky, I guess, not to have played State of Origin. He's a life member of the club, very well respected, and these days does a, a great job, as I just pump those tyres up, <laughs> um, and has done for some time in the corporate world. John Scandalis, welcome to Behind the Raw. Thanks for having me, and that's a fair introduction. So um, you have pumped the tyres up, but um, I appreciate it. You'll be good, you'll um, be good. Listen, so how this works, I don't know if you've watched the first few episodes, uh, we'll open things up, the whistle will blow, we'll, we'll have a set of six questions where we all get to know you a little bit better. Yep. And like uh, Joe last week and, and Robbie Farrow, I don't really know those guys <laughs> too well because I've only been working here for nine months or so. I yep. don't know you that well other than we work together here. And um, so we'll get to know you there. We'll have a few questions from the crowd a bit later on as well. Um, by the way, if you do want to send any questions in, just look on the socials. Probably the best way is uh, drop DM us on our Instagram, uh, West Tigers BTR. And uh, we've got Ciro coming on either next week or the week after. I think Jolie Kane's coming on too. So you might have a few questions for that. In the middle of the, the game or the podcast, we'll have some nitty gritty. We'll talk a fair bit of footy, obviously. Yep. Uh, but feel free to have some fun, right? Yeah, well, speaking of Joel Kane, he's probably come on and tell me that the first try wasn't a try because he, he scored three tries that game, which was round one in 2000. Against and, the Broncos. Um, against the Broncos. And um, I'm pretty sure he'll come in telling you that it wasn't a try, my <laughs> try. It may have been grounded, it may not be grounded, but hey, it's on the record book. So don't let Joel get into your head. So, um, yeah. Sugar will come on. Yeah, um, I'm sure it will. Sure I mean, will. he's wearing a thousand hats. He's worth a the squirrel <laughs> these days. But, you know. That's right. Uh, so then back end of the show, uh, we'll have our favourite five. We've got five minutes on the clock, right? All we'll right. throw a few. Uh, you know, um, some of your favourite moments and people, who we didn't like even, at the back end of the show. So that's how it works. Mate, before we, we, um, we get into the, the set of six and the whistle blows, just on last weekend's game at Leichhardt, right? So another good crowd. Mm -hmm. Oh, mate, there were storylines everywhere. It's it's unfortunate that we've lost back to back games, right? And I know you and me and all West Tigers members and fans will be you know, feeling the pain as the players do. A lot has changed in the club, and it's going to take some time, isn't it, for for that to to bear fruit? Oh, definitely. I think um, people are forgetting, we're well, not forgetting, but you know, we got to understand that the team's a brand new team. It's um, you know, we've got guys coming in from. All parts yeah. of the you know the NRL, um, all different teams. The systems, even though they've been training for the last what three four months in the off season, it's still you know it's, it's just it's not really enough. So until they actually play some games together in proper competition games, that's when they'll get to know each other. Um, if you recall, mate, in two thousand and three, we you know is when we really started our re rebuild with Sheens. Yeah. You know he brought in you know the Fortons and the Farras and the Chris Heinertons and, you know, Benji and all those kind of guys. But that took two, two years to gel. You know, it didn't happen overnight. We, mm. 03, we missed the semis. 04, we missed the semis by one game. And then, you know, 05, all the stars aligned and all the planets, planets aligned mm. and we, we, we won the competition. But it takes time. It takes time to gel. And, you know, you've got a new coaching structure. You've got new high-performance structure. You've got new players coming in. Everyone's trying to understand the systems. Yeah. Um, and it's going to take, yeah, definitely going to take time. Yeah. Um, oh, we, all, we all want it now, right? We, we, of course we do. We, we haven't had success over, you know, for many years now. We understand that. And as, as me, as a, you know, an outsider looking in as well, because I'm, I'm a fan as a, of the club and of the team as well. I, I, I want to see us win. I understand that, we, you know, I want to see, I want to see us winning. Um, but um, in saying that, it is going to take time. And I can sometimes you just got to sit back and go, okay, these guys are doing their best. They're trying to. Mm. They're doing the hazards. I tell you what, from watching the last two games, they've given themselves every opportunity to win the games. Um, and it's just, you know, a couple of errors here and there that have let us down. So well, that's probably the good thing. They have given themselves opportunities. Yeah. They've got themselves into that, but that's it's just been a bit clunky. And it's the first time that um, 
Appy and Brooksy would have played together right. starting. Yeah. yeah, competition. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, so there's look, there's there's some positive signs there. Um, definitely, there's some definitely posi- positive signs because we're we're competitive. We've been we've been competitive the last two games. Um, and just again, we've just let ourselves at a few times, you know, where we have applied a lot of pressure, but then we've just let them off with a either an error or a bad core or a bad judgment in terms of the play. Um, and it's just let the pressure off the other team. And look, probably the weekend was the hardest one to swallow because Newcastle gave us every opportunity to win the game because they, yeah. you know, they lost Ponga early on. Um, Frizzell came off. Uh, they had another concussion, I think. From my, they might have had another call. No, yeah, no sorry, they had some. I think Brayley went off. Brayley, as well. oh, they, they had. Um, they lost. Um, so who, the guy they got. Um, Simbin. Simbin. Yeah. Gone. So they gave us every opportunity to to win the game, but again, just unfortunately, we mm. we didn't capitalize on that, and um, we didn't get away with the win. We left it too late. You know, we scored in the last minute, which was way too late. You know, they, they got us by that two points. So definitely positive signs. Um, so I, I, I'm I'm still optimistic. I'm very positive that we're going to have a really good year. Um, mm. I just we just need to make sure that we gel. And I know the boys are working. Yeah, you know, the guys are in here every morning. I see them coming in. You know, you know, six seven o'clock in the morning, and mm. the coaches are in trying to trying to get that get that missing. Well, there's no part. question about the work ethic. Right? No, the work we, ethic. We see there. it every yeah, day. We see it every day. Yeah, of course. And then um, the players, you know, they're busting their guts. You can see they're. They're frustrated as well. Their their spirits up there. They you know we're trying. I know the coaches. They're doing yeah. that. sheens has been around a long time. He knows he's got to keep them up. And it's, you know it's round two. We've got to remember it's only round two. It's not you know, it's not the end of the world. So we've got time to to recover. We've got time to perform. Um, and they they understand. You know it's it's just it's just that it's going to be that one little bit, the one little piece um, mm. missing piece. Um, it's going to it'll click. It'll click yeah. definitely. So I'm I'm optimistic and. I guess the only message I've got is to all our members, fans, supporters, everyone, just to yeah, you know, stay with us, stay patient, because yeah. Um, yeah, the good times are coming. Um, just we just got to hang in yeah. there. Yeah, two two rounds in, righto. Um, let's get into the first set of six. Then there there Timmy. is the whistle. Uh, Timmy Mander, I think, is refereeing. He's now in politics. <laughs> um, the first carry, so off the back wall. Yep. Uh, Hodgson's taken the kick on the full and he's just given <laughs> you a little short ball. You've got it up as to the 20 scan. That's a good start. As he does. <laughs> um, right out, way back. So, 96 debut with Western Suburbs Magpies. Yep. Uh, local boy out, out that way from, I've told, don't say Minto, it's Mino. <laughs> Mino. Mino. Depends where you sit, yeah. Depends yep. who take, you're talking take to. Take us back to when, even way back when, yep. you first started playing the game and, and your junior pathway and, and your, your tour to, to the NRL. Yeah, I was um I was actually originally a um when I say originally I was I was born in Lightning Ridge. Um my family moved out here um in eighty nineteen eighty. I was actually just not far up the road. Do Ashfield. we know where Lightning Ridge is? Do we know where Lightning Ridge map? is? Um it's up there. It's it's not far from the about an hour away Have from I the been Queensland there? border. Opals. It's famous for opals. Opals. Unless you like opals, you probably wouldn't know, but um Glass uh, House Mountains, are they anywhere near there? No, nah, it's got the bottle house. It's a, it's a house made out of bottles, so maybe right, yeah. I don't think I've been there. Yeah, anyway. yeah, should have a look. Um so I was born there, lived there for four years. We moved out. We moved out of there because um, our, our house got burned down. Um, so my parents yeah, moved to Ashford. I would have been four. Jeez. Yeah. So I was pretty young when I moved out of there. Um, moved to Ashford, not far from the Lees Club, ironically, um, West Ashfield Lees Club. Right. Yeah. Um, so we lived there for until '87, and then I moved to um, Campbelltown or Minto. I moved to Minto. Um, in '87, and I went to Campbellfield High School, uh, public school, where I met the McGuinness boys, Kevin and Kenny. And they, yeah. I was playing soccer before that, so they actually introduced me to rugby league. Um, what age would you have been? There? I was, uh, I was in year five, so yeah. I would have been a bit of late ten. Start. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a late start. I was playing soccer most of my, yeah. um, obviously Greek, Greek background. My dad put me into soccer, and um, yeah, I played soccer for my first. When I say I played soccer, I didn't really play yeah. soccer. I was a goalkeeper, so I didn't really move around. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't, I don't think I kicked any balls. I just well, you could have a bit of a blush. and I don't think I stopped too many goals either. I was, wasn't much of a goalkeeper. <laughs> I was going to ask. So. I was going to ask about the origin scandalous being yeah. multicultural yeah. around this weekend. Uh, we're at Belmore, yeah. um, taking on the dogs, and let's hope that we go as well as we last played at Belmore yeah, against, right. against the Raiders. Um, your family, though. Uh, it was difficult for you, right? You lost your mum at a young age. That must have been really tough for a, a teenager. Mm. Can I ask you, Did how important was rugby league to you 
during that time? Oh, it's huge. And it wasn't just the rugby league. It was the people I was surrounded with. Like yeah. I said, I grew up with the McGuinness boys who introduced me to rugby league. And for starters, they were a big rugby league family, Ken and Kevin and um, their mum. And um, I have to say, you know, once, you know, when my mum passed, which was a – I was 13 at the time, 13, 14 at the time. Um, she took me like I was you know, one of her own very quickly. and um, So I was lucky enough to be around good people at the time. Um, went off the rails a little bit, I guess. You know, I didn't have that. My dad was a single dad trying to support myself and my two sisters. And, um, you know, when that when you haven't got that other parent who, you know, looks after you when the other ones are working or something Absolutely. you can become get, go off the rails a little, rails a little bit and um yeah i must admit I, that happened to me um but again i was just lucky enough that i had one i had rugby league in my life because it kept me busy on the weekends it kept me tra- it kept me going to train on the tuesday and thursday um i had a good um you know if you want to call it a step i guess with um yeah uh josie who who took, like I said, took me in. Then I, as I got older, I had you know people surrounding me, like Steve Noyce, who was the CEO of West Magpies at the time, because um, I was playing junior. I made the Harold Mats and SG. Well, sorry, I made SG Ball to make Harold Mats, SG Ball and Flag Team. So I had those guys, you know, those sort of people around me um, yeah. to sort of, sort of help me out. And, you know, it didn't work all the time. I I, I got into mischief like any, any teenager. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I guess I learned very quickly to appreciate what I had, and you know I. I was when I guess Kenny McGuinness um, made first grade at a really young age. We were sixteen. I thought, well, geez, if he can do it from where we were, from where we background yeah. we had, where we came from, if he can do it, then why, why can't we? So I, I think once I saw him play first grade, I think that's where it started. I think that's where our group sort of believed that we can do it as well. Because then Kenny made it, and Kevin made it, then I made it, and um, so it all sort of just flowed from there. And um, yeah, it was, um, but. Yeah, it was a tough time, like when my mum mum passed. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably guess one of the lucky ones I got th- got through it the other side. Mm. It's it's an inspiring story, it really is. And this game, as you know, it's so big about family, isn't it? Yeah. And, and it, clubs are like a family. When you work in rugby league, as you do, and you have done for so long yep. uh, as a player and corporate and out other roles at the the club as well, you know how much time it takes up. You are almost 100% consumed in, in your work, right? So it, right. It, it has an impact with your own family, I yeah. imagine. They also have to be sort of bought into what Dad does. Oh, of course. When you play, you, you, it's your it's your your real family is your second family, really, because you spend so much time here. Um, in the years that I played first grade from 96 to 2010, I spent more time here and with the boys um, than I really I did with my family because I only saw them, you know, at night or when I'm, yeah. I'm home from training. But most of the time you're... And like any job, you spend most of your time, you know, if you're if you're a nine to five worker, you do the same. So I um yeah, I yeah, no, I, I definitely um yes you have to you have to make sure that the 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 family buys into what you're doing. Um and that's a massive sacrifice if you're married and you've got kids before for them. How many so kids you got? I've got two girls. So yeah. um and anyone that um yeah, anyone that plays football sports, I guess any any professional sports, um the partner definitely has to make a sacrifice to allow you to chase your dream and my partner did that and I'm very, very grateful for that. Up to question or well, tackle four, I, I think, Scando. Um, away from footy, right? Away from footy. So you've been involved in the corporate gig here for, for quite some time. They tell me you're doing a really good job as well. Someone's lying to you, I think. So. <laughs> um, our chief executive, Mr Pasco, did say to me, uh, it might have been yesterday or today, you do tend to play a lot of golf as part, and and that's built. That's build, I knew something like this was coming. Yeah, that's built as part of your your time. So your golf trips, that's work networking. It's right. Networking. So that's networking. Have you heard the saying of "work smarter, not harder"? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I'm still just trying to work out how to do that. <laughs> I've worked it out, mate. Play golf. Yes, I think you have. <laughs> play golf. <laughs> but it, it, okay, okay. So that, that's built as work. Your golf with networking some would say scando that a business meeting given that our club is in the <laughs> west of sydney and southwestern sydney some would say that business meetings at the caxton hotels is quite a fair way to take a meeting best deals get done over a beer mate apparently so i'm still i'm, 
I'm still trying to prove that. So <laughs> I'm giving it a few goes to try to prove that best deals are made on the golf course and over a beer. That's so, a great kick you've got, isn't it? Mate, I, that's what I've been told. So I'm exploring, I'm, I'm trying to prove the fact that it is. So it's just yeah. taken me a, a few years to, to prove it. So these <laughs> annual state of origin trips to Brisbane, they've been going on for a while. We're going for a while and um, yeah, until I perfect it, then I'll keep going. So, um, But to Pasco's comment about me playing <laughs> golf, um, I don't play that often. I, don't, I play on golf days. I What's just, your handicap? I don't have a handicap, actually. Yeah, I don't play. Look, too, and in all seriousness, I, I do. I do play. I like my golf. I do play when I can. Um, I don't really get time to play social golf. I play a lot of golf days and Ambrose, so, which doesn't. If any golfer knows yeah, out there knows that Ambrose, Ambrose isn't is good. good isn't good for your golf. Um, it's good for knockabouts. Yeah, it's good for knockabouts. But um, as a golfer, no, not too too good. So, um, but yeah, Pascal's just jealous because he doesn't get to play as much as me. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, I'm back on a serious note. Your role in corporate. So you, I mean, you're still looking after yourself. You're very big, and you were in performance and coaching. You've been in that side of the yep. game, right? When, w- why did you elect to go down the corporate route that, you, as you have done? Um, so I was in, I'm, I was involved with the strength and conditioning side of and high performance side for five years, um, and then obviously the things changed, and I got moved moved away from it. And um, I could have kept going that towards that pathway at another club. I didn't really want to leave the club. Um, so when I sort of got moved on from that that role, uh, this opportunity came up. And it's something that I, d- I had done as a player anyway. Like, you know, we as a player, you the, the corporates at that time would, you know, grab me and take me to a sponsor meeting, for example. And mm-hmm. um, because, you know, at the end of the day, even though the sponsors are there for a business side, they're also there for a, an emotional side. They want to be part of the club. So um, to take a player with you... Um, you know, they want to feel like they're part of the club, which is, you know, that's what they should be. So well, I was doing that as a player and um, I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed yeah. meeting people and talking about the club and trying to, you know, as a player, you sell on the club. That's basically what you're doing. You know, you're the brand. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that part of it when I was playing. And when they that opportunity came to do it as a full-time job, I, I jumped at the opportunity because, you know, a lot of reasons. One, I enjoyed it. And two, I was going to be still working for the club and be part of this club. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really, again, I didn't want to, I never wanted to play for another club and hopefully I'll never get to – I don't have to ever work for another club. I, you keep know, keep so those golf days I'll keep up. the golf days. So, yeah, that's probably the reason yeah. why. And then, yeah, that was in 2014 and ever since then I've been doing this role and yeah. um, like anything, it took me a few years to learn it and understand the real yeah. uh, nitty-gritty part of it and making sure that um, I had my own style in terms of the, being a corporate sales guy. I'm not yeah. – you know, I guess I have the advantage of, um, you know, I play for the club, I'm – when I talk about the club, it's all about passion. passion. I want the club yeah. to be successful, but I also want anyone to be who comes to the club as a sponsor or member or just a fan to to enjoy the ride and be you know yeah. be part of the journey with us because it is a it is a journey, um, and I understand there's a business side of it too. So mm. um, you know any sponsor money or membership money or anything that comes to the club is to help us improve and to yeah. to win a title. That's the end of the day for us. Yeah, and I imagine you know, sort of gone to the days you know. Uh, People that don't don't throw money in willy nilly. They want to see th- their right. brands in the right places, and then all those assets and and that's right getting what they've they've paid for yeah. as well. Um, and so they should. It's you know that's some yeah. doesn't matter if you invest a dollar or you know ten million dollars. You're still you know you're you're investing in the club, and you want to see a, some sort of return. In that's either success, a brand, or and a couple of recent examples here. Pepper Money have come yep. on. Year, yep, coach sponsor, coach sponsor. Yep. Fab as well have upgraded their deal. Yeah, so yeah, we've got, and that's the thing. We've, yeah, you know, the corporate dollar for us is, is is strong. We've got a lot of backing. We've got a great supporters. We've got, we've got really strong brands that are supporting us. Um, um, and you know, you, you named a few KFC play up as well. Brighton's obviously been a major sponsor for a long for many years. Lee's has been a great supporter of our club for many many years, and you know he's. And all our supporters, all our, our sponsors, um, members, they've ride, they've they've ridden that, they that those tough years for us, and they're going to be rewarded once we we get these good you know these good years coming up, and that's what it's all about. And um, I talk about you know we they come and ride the journey with us. This is what it's about, you know, riding the lows and also enjoying the highs. So, um, but for us, yeah, the sponsorship is very important, just as membership and, and everything else. Um, and I enjoy that. I love I love being able to go out and meet different people. Um, you know. I, I make, 
you know, some great friends I just through sponsorship. So. Yeah, no, I bet you're doing your yeah. long-lasting relationships like, yeah. like you do with your former teammates, I'm yeah. sure. Right, oh, um, it's been a long set of six. <laughs> we're, we're, we're down the We've other end of the field. got a few restarts, mate. We're down, yeah. yeah. Uh, Amanda's got the, uh, the arm in the air, right? Brighton's lawyers are the lawyers you know and trust. If you require legal representation, then why look anywhere else? Call Brighton's lawyers on 1800 848 848. Brighton's lawyers, we do support you in your time of need. Uh, all right, uh, let's talk some more footy and the nitty gritty. Um, some of the key issues around the club yep. uh, and 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 the game as well. So multicultural round uh, launches this week. Uh, we are at Belmore to play the Dogs. Um, so it just takes there's a scandalous heritage then. Uh, Greek, yeah. Greek, yeah. Yep. When did your Dad or, or family move out? Uh, my dad moved here in 1963. Uh, my mum much longer. Um, and, yeah, they. my dad was a, basically um, a wharfie and did all the jobs, odd jobs, until they moved to Lighton Ridge and, um, yeah, went and got into open mining. Um, so, yeah, they were there for many years, about 10 years I think they were there. Do you, do you know um, origins, whereabouts in Greece? Uh, yeah, it's a place called Pigros. It's a, it's not far from a, um, I think it's Olympia. It's sort of in the, it's at a small village. Yeah. 200 kilometers away from Athens. I don't know exactly. I, I've been, I did. Yeah. My, I have, I have a sister that still lives there at the moment. So oh, I went okay. and visited back in 2006 when I was trying to organize a, um, I was trying to organise a Greek. I was trying to get my Greek passport for to go to England because they yeah, just when I played in England for two years. So I, oh, right. just I had to go over go there. around the back door, sort of. Yeah, I had to, well, I had to go over there because um, yeah, I actually I don't know. I try to get it. It's a good reason. And also, I was over there to play in the um, with the, the, the Greek team. I didn't get to play because it got delayed, and I was supposed to be back for training. So I actually missed out on playing over there, um, yeah. which was one of their first games in in Greece. Um, that's when they were trying to start a domestic comp in Greece. I don't um, think it's huge over there, but but growing. It's growing, um, yeah. and obviously they played in the World Cup this yeah. last year for the first time ever, which was a great achievement achievement by everyone that um yeah that was involved trying to Steve Ojalas obviously head coach and you know they'd been trying. Would you you have played with Georgie? Um, yeah, I played with Georgie. Yep, yeah. ninety six to nine, yeah, two thousand one. Yeah. So he retired in two thousand one with the West Tigers. Yeah, I, well, yeah. I, I did so, too for a year, I think. Um, so I was over there for, and I, yeah, I, I visited where my my parents um, grew up and were born for the first time ever. Greek islands, Scando. Have you done the Greek islands? Never done the Greek islands. You're not. I've only been to Greece Greece twice. Fun, funny enough, I was I went over with my mum when I was eight, um, which I don't obviously remember much of it, um, and then I went over in two thousand six when I had to sort out what, yeah, all that passport stuff. I've never yeah. been to the Greek islands. What was your time like with, with Huddersfield? A couple of years there, weren't you? Loved it. North Great of club. Yeah, Huddersfield, mm. Yorkshire. That's um, different, isn't it? Yeah, there was, um, it was a wonderful experience. It was, uh, the club couldn't have been any more welcoming than, yeah, as, as they were. They were, you know, they were, from the moment we landed and, you know, we were moving, not only myself, but my, my wife had been, you know, we never really left that Cameltown sort of area. Never, well, when I say left, never lived anywhere else apart from the MacArthur yeah, oh, area. Mate. And um, suddenly we've picked up two young kids, you know, three and one at the time, and we've headed over to England, um, the unknown, and suddenly we're, they've plonked us in a house in Yorkshire, had us a little town called, a little village called Slathwaite. Um, yeah. And know one, know week, one week into it, I'm I'm heading over to Portugal for a footy camp, left my wife there with the two kids. Oh, so, as you do. <laughs> yeah, as you do. So <laughs> you got, she, you got, um, you'll be right. Again, I, you know, you... The sacrifices they make to again to chase your career is, you know, it's it's it's, um, it's great. So, um, it's yeah, it's you can never thank them enough for that. So, but my England loved it. Every love we loved every minute of it. It's um, a different world, isn't it? It's it's, yeah, we we made some really great friends, and um, my my wife's actually great friends with some mm. in this area still. Um, so, I I would have stayed. I probably could have st- stayed another year if I, I got injured. I ended up doing my knee, so I um mm. yeah I. I basically called retirement after that. Um, so, the, I, well, I penciled in retirement. I'm going to talk about the reti- <laughs> retirement. That's why I penciled you, it in. You penciled <laughs> in. Not in ink. Yeah. Uh, had an eraser That's right. at, at the ready. Uh, just back to life in the north of England, right? So Johnny Bateman arrived here only yeah. two or three weeks ago. Oh, yeah, three weeks. Uh, and I did an interview with him. And so I lived in, in, in London for 12 years, right? Oh, wow. So, yeah. yeah. So I... I understood perfectly every word he was saying, yeah. but a lot of people in the office that haven't really travelled or they found it difficult to understand some of his yeah, words. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and it's funny how it changes from village to village. It's but like, once you've lived over there, oh, yeah. well, yeah, a different dialect different can be dialect, five yeah. miles up the road and they speak totally different. Exactly, yeah. Once you've lived up there, you, you can sort of... Un- you pick it up. You yeah. pick it up. Uh, and the lifestyle as well, back to the north of England. Right. What I imagine you had a few pints of ale in the George Hotel. Had a few there. Uh, not quite the George Hotel, but we will... Um, that was I did visit. I did visit. The, I did visit, visit the museum a few times, which was fantastic. Which was yeah. at the George Hotel. Um, that was right in Huddersfield. So, um, Huddersfield. Huddersfield. Um, the best. I still sing this. I still sing the Huddersfield Giants song. With, uh, our end of, How's it go? Uh, I can't remember it. Just uh, even. We are something. the Giants from Huddersfield. Are we? I can't say anymore because it's swear. So, I'll, oh. I, <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I, um, I still have the song stuck in my head. Obviously, because we won a lot of games, so it's um, it's still there. But um. I think the best part about it, not only the football, but the travelling side of it, how easy it was to travel. We you know, any weekends off, you can jump on a plane and in two hours you're in, you know, yeah. Italy, Spain or whatever yeah. you are and um, you can enjoy, you know, two or three days in another country. Yeah. Here, you sit there for 25, 26 hours before you go anywhere. So, um, let me tell you, you're living in the north of England. It's, it's good to get away and get some sunshine. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that was a challenge. Obviously, the first few months was a bit cold and dark. and, and <laughs> That's the life. Yeah, yeah. but... Um, but once the summer came along, uh, along and the sun came out and it was up at you know the sun was up at four and down at eleven at night, it was it was fantastic. I and tell beautiful. people that. Well, yeah. yeah, it's ten o'clock, ten yeah. thirty at night, and you're still out. Well, about, they warned uh, us when we got there because we had a house. The house we were in was this big old beautiful house. It was built like uh, Georgian, 17, Victorian, seventeen seventy or something. Maybe Georgian, like that. I think. Must be. I'm not. I don't know. know. I don't know my history <laughs> that much. Um, but it, it had these really had these windows that weren't covered and and then obviously we arrived in we arrived in December and it was pretty dark so we didn't have to worry about it then but I remember some someone saying to us you better get some covers because when summer comes at four o'clock in the morning um it's bright as anything and my kids were up and up in mm. the mornings and late at night they were up until 11 thinking you know <laughs> daytime outside so. no it's, it's a it's a it's a different experience and uh I thoroughly enjoyed my time over there yeah, as well um Right, you've been in a number of roles at the club, as we've already touched on, right? How would what would you say the the, the greatest thing about the, the I and mean, how has the club transitioned from when you joined West Tigers mm-hmm. to now? What would be some of the the, the most positive changes you think oh, you've seen? Just how many people are actually working here? I guess if everyone's it's we're really specialised in the different areas. You know, we've got. Corporates who just do corporate, you've got media who just do media, you've got membership who just do me- membership. There's no real cross. Everyone's really specialised in their roles, um, and we cover that very well. I think you know we we hire the best people um, in each role, and um, we really mix well with the footy department. Everyone works. It's a big. It, it's a it's a big organisation mm. now. You know we've got over what if you include the footy staff, hundred staff. Yeah. Are we close to that? Roughly something like that. Um, and I'm talking, you know, from flag to all the way to oh. to CEO to whatever board, whatever mm. you know. There's so everyone works together in such a big organisation. Um, Whereas back and, back in the day, I guess you'd have to be multi skilled and do a bit of this and exactly, a bit of that. Yeah. Well, mate, if you go back to let's go even go further. Let's go back to '96 when I started in Magpies. You had the CEO, the general manager, the media guy, and you had the football manager, and then obviously your coach. There's five, that and then he it. then he had his fitness, his trainer, and maybe an assistant coach. And then you had a, you had a physio all up. You wouldn't have more than ten people. Well, rewind about four years when I was there yeah. at, at Campbelltown or, or Rana Park. Yeah, well, that would have been. We less. had even fewer. That's what In I mean. fact, Gordon Allen was the chief exec. I think Steve Noyce would have been maybe even the chief was, exec yeah. after that as well. So you know, back and again when I was playing early, when I was again we go back to that long ago. It's you had changed, your, you had your membership doing the sponsorship as well. Then also doing game day. Yep. So this you know. That part of websites that, weren't a thing. Websites weren't a thing <laughs> to get the message across. You had to go and knock on people's doors and put flyers out. Carry um, a pigeon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a few pigeons. Um, so that part of next it, yeah. time game on the on the, <laughs> the traffic lights. Well, Tommy used to actually. We used to get in a. So we had a sponsor, uh, Schaefer Ken Schaefer Auto yeah. Body, um, Bryson, who the, his son now he's still a partner of the club. Yep. He used to have a Cadillac. We used to get in the Cadillac and Tommy would be on the microphone <laughs> the going down Queen Street yelling out, come to our game next week versus the Knights at Campbelltown Stadium. Let's or, get back sorry, to that. Sorry, come down to Rana Park. Let's um, get back so to So we that. would do that every Friday or Thursday with Tommy yelling out the, the mic. We'll stop at Court Tavern, have a few beers, jump back in the car. and. Well, why don't we put Sheensy on top of the Raw store, <laughs> man? Mate, why not? Go through the Raw store. So <laughs> that was how, that's how we were promoting the game back then. Um Mm. So yeah, that was uh, obviously, and now obviously a little bit. Di- well, when I say a little bit, a lot different. Um, 
But, you know, we, we've got, you know, specialists in our roles now, mm. you know, people that are just looking after that and they're doing their best to make sure that um, everything's right and anyone mm. that comes in and inquires about you know, membership or sponsorship, they've been looked after as best they can. Well, I mean, the game has just got so more professional over the years and the more right. money pouring into the game yeah. through broadcast rights and all that. It, it's a it's a multi, multi-million dollar business. Um, and you talked on the staffing here. So you look around here at the Zurich Centre, um, did you bring Zurich on board? Is that your gig? I didn't, but I'll say you played a role. Yeah, 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 played a role. Surely would have yeah. played. They play golf. <laughs> and I haven't Zurich. That. Um, uh, looking around though, on a serious note, so there's so many former players are now working with us, and that team that you're in in 2005. So Robbie was in there. Yep. Benji was in there. Chris Huntington. Heino was in there. Mm-hmm. Pat Richards mm-hmm. was in there. Yep. Working here. Um, Chris Lawrence is working here, but he would have joined a few years he later. Came the year after. Year after, did he? Yeah. A lot of former players now working with the club. And that's a good thing, right? What, what are the important things? Why is it so important that you have so many players now working with the club in various roles? I think because if you, we go back to a few comments, you know, the DNA's back in the club. We understand they've played for the club, they've got passion for the club. Um, we want to see nothing but best for this club. We want to see. We want to, not only do we want to be part of a successful club because we're part of it. We want to see anyone that comes and plays or works for the club to enjoy that because we know what it, we know what it feels like. Um, we had a really good run between two thousand, I guess, four and eleven, where we you know we made a few you know semis during those years, and so we know what it feels like to be part of a successful club, um, and we know and we know what it takes. Why are you so confident? That it will be successful. What, what is it about the club that? Because we have the right you? people in the right places. Um, we have the right staff. We have right right coaching staff. We have the right administration. Um, the players. You know, we've I think we've recruited great. Our pathways are sensational. You know, we've got a really strong pathways in not just the boys but the girls as well. Um, we have great coaches in the pathways, um, and we're all going for the same goal. We're all heading for that same goal. Yeah, there's no, you know, there's no mixed messages. We all know what the goal is: is to win a premiership, and be successful, and to do that year, you know, every year, not just you know once off, and then you know we we have to do it. We want to be the team that you know continuously be, you know, are in the semi-finals, and um, I feel and I I feel like you can feel that people are, are doing their best to get there. You talked about that retirement coming out of retirement mm-hmm. to come back to this club. Sheenzy would have played a big role in that, I imagine. Yeah, so that that happened. Like I said, I penciled in my retirement because I did my knee in Huddersfield, and um, I basically I, I, when I was in England, I called because I was coming back anyway. I called Sheenzy and said, "Mate, you know, I'm I'm coming back to Australia. Is there a role? Do you need anything? Can I jump in somewhere that I can start? You know, because I wasn't sure really. I actually wasn't even sure what I wanted to do at that time. I was oh. just coming out of football. I'd done all my fitness side of things. I was you know into fitness and strength and conditioning all that. So. He offered me the um, – actually, funny enough, when I first came into the role, Steve Noyce offered me a job in the community department. So I was there for like a week, something like that, and Shanzi offered me the strength and conditioning role for the 20. So I was sort of doing both at the yep. time, but I fell more into the S&C side of things. Um, and then it – and then Did you have in the back of your mind, you know, she, she's like probably a good player? Not at all. So funny, the thing was I came back to work, but then I wanted to play – I started playing for the Got reserve the grade magpies. Yep. And that was just more of just a bit of a niche, just to get it out of my system and play a bit of fun park football. Little and build a few blokes. Yeah, like, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just get that little bit of frustration yeah. out while I could. Um, I was thirty. Geez, what was I? I was thirty-three at the time, so I thought, you know what, I'll just muck around in, in state cup. Leo um, asked me to come and play, and you know, I thought, why not? I can help out the kids there at the same time. I can. I was doing strength conditioning, so it all sort of just. It was all my, just for myself to just try to get it out of my system because when you retire, you still have that competitive edge. Yeah, you, you still want to, you still want to play. You think, think you can still play. It stays with you. It stays with you forever, forever. but your body, and you know, finally gives away. It's more the mind that stays there. Yeah. Um, but at that time, yeah, I was still feeling okay. My knee had recovered okay from the injury that I suffered in Huddersfield. Um, so I said, all right, I'll start playing by round. Eight, I think it was, or nine. Uh, the NRL suffered a few injuries um, to their front rows and. Sheenzy sort of came knocking on my door, said, mate, look. How's the body? Yeah, how's the body? Would you be keen on playing if you need to? I said, mate, I'm happy to, yeah. I've, well, I can't say no to Sheenzy, geez. Right. I, one, I couldn't say no to Sheenzy. I couldn't say no to playing for West Tigers again because so, I never even thought it was going to happen. So um, I said, yeah, mate, I'm, I'm available if you need me. I, I can fit in, fill in for one or two games. And 
by round 11, I was playing yeah. in a row and I played for the rest of the year in 2009. And we unfortunately got beat by Para towards the end to get knocked out of the semis. To not make the semis, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So 249 first grade games. What? Oh, couldn't you have just gone one more game to get the 250? Well, I basically that I busted my ass. That's that's what basically happened. I, what do you um, mean? 2010, broken bum. Broken bum. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, 2009. I said I was done. Um, I was turning 34. Um, again, I stayed in the S and C side of things. I was training with the guys, you know, on and off. I wasn't playing. And round 12, I think it was. Funnily enough, we lost a few front rows again. I think uh, mm. Fafita was injured. Keith Gallo was injured. Toddy Payton got injured. Um, Junior Moore got injured. There was a bit of a yeah. bit of an injury sort of crisis with the front rows, and Sheenzy like knocked on my door again and broke that emergency glass and said, "Mate, <laughs> I might need you for a few games." And I said, "Mate, I'm I'm ready to go." So yeah. I I think I, I can't remember. I can't remember. I think I might have played one or two reserve grades before it just to get the body sort of into shape. Yes. Um, and then by round fourteen, I was back on the park playing first grade again. So yeah. I played. I think I played six games or seven games, and that's when I tore my glute. So I tore my basically broke my butt, yeah. um, and that was two games out of the semis, oh. which I finished on two forty nine. Um, fitness test was a week. I tried to play so the Dragons game, which was the semi one more game. The game if we had won, we would have gone into the grand final. I didn't. I wasn't. I was probably ninety five percent confident. But a game like that, you don't want to be ninety five percent confident. You need to be a hundred percent confident. Um, so we made the call that I wouldn't play, and I think he, Dave, Ben Murdoch, um, uh, Ben Murdoch made, made yeah. his debut that game. Um, and she said, if we get through, I'll play you in the grand final, which would have been my two fiftieth. But unfortunately, we got beat by the Dragons, and the rest is history. Yeah. So I finished on two forty nine. So I remembered more about two forty nine. I probably no one would have known I played two fifty if I played two fifty. They all they, they all remember, remember two forty nine. They all remember the two forty nine. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't get yeah. Sheenzy likes to remind me that he finished me on two forty nine. So <laughs> he finished you. Yeah. But again, I'm I'm grateful that I even got to that number because technically, really, I was retiring in two thousand and eight yeah. after the Huddersfield stint. Yeah. So for to get an extra what was it twenty something games, I was I was very grateful. Well, mate, you look like you could still play. You're in very good shape. Oh, thank I'm you. Just but yeah, those. I got no no chance of getting on the field again, mate. But you sit there. For I bet you sit there, riding every tackle. Oh, of course yeah, you, do. you do. You never, yeah. you never lose that as no. a, as a as a sports person, I guess, or professional, something that you've done all your life. Yeah. Um, you never lose that competitive edge, and um, your mind tells you you want to go on so, there, but you know the body will bod. get absolutely crushed. Bod so, ain't up to it. Yeah. Just on Sheenzy. So, what's he? Has he changed much in the way what you've seen him now in his coaching role in terms of style and man management? Uh, in man anyway. management, no, the style, no, definitely not. He he's he's a very um, technical coach and he loves the basics. He knows he wants you to know the basics, understand the basics before you can go and do anything else. And um, there's one thing, one big thing when he was coaching us was he was never scared to try anything um, on the field as long as you practice it. And I think he has still has that mentality. And I think that's you know Benji's is the same as well. I think they understand each other that if you practice that training, they'll let you do it on. Well, they'll you know give it a go on the, on the field, licensed to basically thrill. Yeah, that's what it was. And I don't think he's changed in, in that regard. Um, I haven't really been around him the last year to really, well, the last whatever, you know, mm. six months to see his coaching style in terms of game day. I haven't had a chance to really see much of that. So I'm not really sure um, what, his, what his coaching style is, is now. Yeah. But I'm really, when we were coming, he was coaching us. He was actually quite calm. He probably... He probably ripped us a few times, and they'll probably deserve. They were, well, when I say probably, they, they definitely were deserved when he we gave it to us. But um, it's not something that he does, you know, all the time. Um, it's yeah, it's quite measured. Well, so, I haven't seen one yet because they they closed the door sort of. Oh, uh, like he, week he gave it to. I remember one that was stood out, stood out. It still sticks with me. That's must have, must have affected me because he called us cowards one one game because we we played New Zealand in Auckland or. Or Wellington, I think it was, and Under it was cold. Ribs. It was freezing. It was just a sh- one of those mm, yeah. you know, sh- days yeah. where you just it was just hard to get up and play the game, and you could see it. We 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 weren't didn't, we, you weren't there. We weren't there at all. And um, you know, we made you know we didn't want to admit it, but we probably did make the excuse that it was cold and wet and just yuck. Just didn't. Turn and when up. we came in at halftime, he yeah he he ripped us a new one and called us cowards, and it still sticks in my mind because I never wanted to let him down like that again. Because it's not that we. We play bad. It's that we let him down. You know, we, as as a, as a player, you you don't want to let yourself down, but you'd also don't want to let your coach down. So, um, mm. so for some reason, that sticks in my head. And 
I don't think I ever yeah, went into a game like that ever again after that comment. So, um, but he, like I said, he knows how to, um, yeah, if there's someone who's going to... Oh, it's a low blow from Shanty. I know. Uh, uh, can you have a word to him for me? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Um, right, let's uh, let's take a few questions from the crowd. We've, we've got a few that yeah. have they, they've come in via the email address, but it's probably the easiest way. Be nice. Oh, they're all good. The <laughs> easiest way is, is probably just look at our socials and um, DM us on on Insta. So, as I said, coming up, and I'm not sure which order we're doing next week. Ciro is coming on. Yep. I want to have a chat to yeah, him. Some good stories there. The big boy. Yep. Bigger than you, Ciro. He's massive. Yeah. It was Jolly massive Kane's he, coming massive on. As well. Was playing, oh well, and I think. Oh, pretty tight shorts he wore too. The uh, old classics. Do you remember the little? He's too big for me, mate. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I, pl- I got to play against Ciro two years, which was uh, a highlight of my career, I guess. He's he, on a serious. No, grew like, up watching him, so it was. Um, I bet it and was. then to play two years against him was, um, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, he um, he's doing a really good job, and he has, has done for a while in Pathways, Ciro. Okay, West Tigers fans, show your stripes and get ready to roar with the latest merchandise from the West Tigers Raw Store. From stylish polos to cosy hoodies, we've got everything you need for the 2023 season. With a range of sizes and styles to choose from, you'll find the perfect item to fit your personal style. Whether you're heading to the game or you're just hanging with mates, the West Tigers Raw Store has got you covered. So why wait? Head to the Raw Store today and show your stripes. Right, let's uh, let's take some questions from the crowd again. Drop on the socials, DM us on Insta, um, send them through. Uh, these guys have emailed through, but it's probably easier if you just DM us on Insta. Mark from uh, Roselle, uh, is it true that when you retired, you'd framed your boots in a glass box with the caption, break glass in case of emergency? Not true, but I thought about it a few times. So, um, yeah, I was just waiting for Shane to come back to me again just to, to fill in. But um, He also said, why did you come out of retirement? We've already already yeah, touched yeah, on that. Just, you still had the itch. Just had the itch. Yeah. And you wanted to scratch it. Uh, Craig, <laughs> Craig from Haberfield, uh, after two rounds, where do you think we need to improve most? And he's obviously talking about our NRL team. Uh, definitely ball control. I think we've, yeah. uh, again, uh, we touched on it early. We, we we are applying a lot of pressure on teams, but then we, we just uh, either lost, loss of concentration or just basic skill at the moment where we're just, um, yeah, releasing that pressure a little bit because we, we just do silly errors um, by either just, that first round. I think there's maybe three occasions, I, I feel I remember, where we just, it was just a base, it was a pure just catch and drop sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so, Ball control is, is definitely a, is one where we, we probably need to improve from what I've seen. Um, obviously, there's there's probably other areas too. We touched too. on that, probably going to um, come with... And defending our line, I guess, you know, there's a few times where we attack their line and there's a lot of pressure applied to them. And then when, for some whatever reason, again, through our own error or, um, you know, just a bit of luck from, from their side, they end up on our, in our, in our, um, our half and... You know, we haven't defended it very well and they've scored straight away, whereas, you know, it's taken us a few times to crack their line. So probably defence around that area and just our ball control from, from what I've seen in the last two games. All right, Scando. Uh, the Minto Magpie. Or, or Cobras. You drop. No, he's, he, he's called. Oh, he, sorry, he's called. No, this bloke, he's called the Minto Magpie. Okay. That's all right. That must be his, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't got a name on it. Are you liking what you see from the Pathways teams uh, in the Southwest? Yeah. I mean, you, you're, yeah. you're living out there. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. I think... Um, you know, the SG Ball and Harold Matt's teams are very strong. Um, our flag's not far off. It's, um, you know, we've, we've had, I think we've uh, two, one, one win, one loss at the moment. So they're looking strong. And our State Cup obviously is very strong. But our, mm. our part and our main, our ba- our main teams have um, had a slow start, but they've come, come strong um, the last couple of games. So Pathways is very strong. And, and what I see at Southwest, yeah, fantastic squad of um, group of players. Well, it's a huge focus for the club, it and is. we know that the Southwest Corridor yep. and, and and through Macarthur Region and beyond in yep. Group Six That's is, right, is yeah. very important for us. How important is the new Centre of Excellence going to be? That's uh, we've got the, the funding for at yeah. at Lumia. That that's a can be that's huge. great. Yeah, now we can bring our pathways in, and we can really specialise the training and making sure we we identify the talent because um, we're going to have more than one area. Um, and they're going to have somewhere to train. They're going to, you know, we don't have to always look for a, a, a place for them to, to train. That's probably the hardest part. Shannon Gallant's happy. I'm sure he is. He's never in the office anyway. No, so. well, it just means he's not travelling from Campbelltown to Concord. For, so he's, 
you know, his office out there is Dan, his penthouse above that's, the... That's a bonus for us, I guess, isn't it? If he's, oh, if he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> He don't does a great him, don't job. Don't tell him though. I said that. Sorry, he does, he, sorry, Shannon. He does do a great job, <laughs> Shannon. Good guy, with man. The, so, well. But he looks after the, he does, the pathways yeah. through the. Oh, he's doing a fantastic topic. job. And like you said, he's, you know, he's connecting with the Group Six, um, the, the Campbelltown competition. You know, he's bringing them all together. And mm. um, again, we, we've got such a, a, a big pool out there um, that we have to make sure that we identify the, the, the talent. Mm. And, and Noddy's doing a great job too. And, right, and yeah. the women, the women's participation numbers are on the rise through that whole area. So yeah, we, yeah, there's we, a lot happening. We, 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 I mentioned it before, the pathways for the girls and boys is huge. Um, there's so many girls wanting to play rugby league and we've got such a, you know, a, a, so many to pick from. Um, I'm excited not just for our pathways who are coming through, but also our, our NRLW and our um, Harvey Norman teams that we've got so much talent coming through over the next few years. Yeah, and, and Natasha and Lisa Fiola uh, yep. kicked off last That's right, weekend yeah. as well. Um, Daniel from Lumia, who was the hardest trainer in your team from 05? Uh, apart from Good me. Question. Um, <laughs> apart from me, hardest trainer. Bryce Gibbs was a fit as anything. Yeah. Um, was he the hardest trainer? Depends how you classified do you mean the fitness wise or the actual hardest who worked the hardest who worked the hardest uh heine was up there i have to say heine gave in every put in every time he would come to still train. looking good still look yeah really? still looks good yeah heine was there um you know what everyone had their own I tell everyone, you, everyone, put in, everyone put fit. in i can't really you know apart from just a few standouts like heineton or you know bryce gibbs who was just that was just bryce gibbs just naturally fit he could yeah. run could run forever um yeah everyone everyone was pretty much that year well actually from five oh oh three to oh five oh six but part when i was there everyone yeah, it was just talking again on the oh five team right and this is something that we're going to be rolling out over the course of the season on behind the raw um and tell me if you like it so that iconic try right I didn't Gibson. score. I didn't score. So I wasn't. No, you, you didn't score. Oh, okay. Rich, so, yeah, Paddy Richards try. The Benji oh, Marshall. He keeps telling me about this. Away, he keeps telling me about this try. I've seen it. though. you know he's got it on repeat on his phone. Oh, so when people when surprised. people ring, it, that's what comes up. It's, so is yeah, so yeah. is Musa. Musa loves it too. Oh, yeah. But the commentary is quite quite good. Right? Yeah. It's it's an iconic try. What we're going to do is um, put the scripting of the commentary of that that Pat Richards try from the 05 Grand yeah. Final on the socials, and we get our our audience, our fans, to maybe send us some phantom commentary of the try. Yeah. And we'll judge the winner, maybe a couple each, each one or two each month. That'd be, wasn't a bad try. We're going to get Joel Kane to do it. Paddy's try or Bryce call. Gibbs try? Paddy's try. I like Bryce Gibbs better. Do you? Yeah. Because um, he's a front rower. Yeah. yeah. I don't like wingers. It's just an idea. I'm sick now of we might <laughs> We might even get Rabs to do it. Oh, yeah. To uh, judge the winner. That'd be good. And we might even get him to reenact it. I like it. You like, like it? Yeah. The thing, um, is, the thing is, we're going to hear about this try all over again. Like over and over again. Well, it is. You know, every time I play golf, I'm playing with Pat. Were you on the field at the time? It was about 35 minute mark. I was on the I'm bench. Talking. I just finished doing like 45 tackles in 10 <laughs> minutes. So I was a bit tired. <laughs> So I didn't score. Bryden's lawyers are the lawyers you know and trust. If you require legal representation, then why look anywhere else? Call Bryden's lawyers on 1800 848 848. Bryden's lawyers, we do support you in your time of need. Scando, <laughs> it's now um, time for uh, the favourite five, right? Yeah. The favourite five. There's only five left on the clock, so we're going to yeah. rattle through this, okay? We've gone a little bit over time, and this. Pretty high it's budget. five and o'clock, you won't see. High it, budget studio, you, right? Time you won't is. see any wingers there if it's five to go. That's why you're asking the front row. Five, to do the what, hard work. They're still, they're you're still going. That's and right. you're an 80 minute player back in the day. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Your favourite moment in rugby league, um, I, I guess, is it the 05 grand final? Doesn't have to it's, be. It's pretty hard to, to pinpoint one. Obviously, grand final is there, definitely, because um, that's what you play for. Um, my first grade debut is another one. Um, I think. When was that? That was 96 against Penrith. Uh, Roycey Simmons was the coach for Penrith and Tommy was yeah. the coach for wow. West Magpies. Um, and we played at Campbelltown and there was about maybe four fights that night, which was even made it even more interesting. Um, but it just not not because of but that. They just, were legal back then. They were, yeah. Well, sort of sort, sort of legal. Of. I think we ended up getting fined after it or something. Can't remember. Um, but just the fact that you and you know you, you see it in all the young kids, there's so much leading up to that game because you've trained so many off-seasons, you know, as a young, young kid and 
you know, from the age of whenever you start playing to you actually think that you're going to be a first grader. You know, there's so much sacrifice. As a young kid, you know, you're, you're missing out on parties, you're missing out on uh, night outs, or you're, you're doing things that not every teenager is doing because you have to either be at home because you're playing on the weekend. So there's so many sacrifices you're making to get there and then suddenly you get the, the, the call and, um, you know, the coach says, mate, you're playing on the weekend, first grade, and it's... Everyone. So you felt what Brandon Termuth was going through. Oh, hundred percent. You can. I yeah, right. I, I love watching the young kids because you can see their face. They're just. It's. It's excitement. It's nerves. It's. It's satisfaction. It's. It's everything all mixed in one sort of day. You know. So pride. It's pride. Your parents are your happy. Family. Families. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Proud of you. So. Yeah. So to answer your question, and um, is my first grade debut against Penrith, and my obviously the grand final, which was such a special moment for not just myself, for my family, and obviously the club. Which of your former teammates did you enjoy most good times with off the field? Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> it's tough, I don't know. I'm going to say Daniel Fitzhenry because he always, he, he always um, used me as an excuse to stay out later. So, yeah. <laughs> you so, were his leave pass. I was yeah. his leave pass. So, um, Daniel Fitzhenry. Yeah, but we always, yeah, we had some really good times. So I think maybe I had good times with a lot of the boys. We still do. You know, we still catch up and when we can and, and have a... Still tight. Still tight, yeah. yeah. That's, you know, even... And you know, I'm talking, you know, I'm still good friends with, you know, mates, close mates with the guys from the Magpies yep. team, yep. so... And um, you mightn't see them that often, but... No, but when you do, yeah. it's like you haven't... It's yeah. like you saw them last week sort of thing, so... Yeah, no, I know exactly what I mean. Uh, the most talented player you have played against in your career? Against? Yep. Jeez, that's a tough one. Yeah, I know. Wow. I should have... Giving you a heads up, some know, of these that's questions. That's a really tough one. Um, again, I was lucky enough to play against a lot of players and a lot of talented players. Against, um, yeah, that's a hard one, mate. That's tough one. Uh, yeah. Well, let's narrow it down. Obviously, let's you got. Make, you know, let's make him a forward. Let's make it a forward. A forward, talented, tough, tough, most talented. Talented, tough and talented. Forward, tough and talented, you've played against. So I guess two different things. Tough. Shane Webke is definitely up there. Petra yeah. and the receiver definitely up there. Um, Steve Kearney. Um, uh, you can, I can name Well, he it. played at Magpies. Yeah, he was, yeah. He was in the 21's President's Cup Grand Final. So, uh, yeah, way, way back. Way back. Way, I well, I was, I was his captain in 21's and I think Warren Ryan said, no, he played one game of 21's. <laughs> You're coming up here, son. I remember watching it when I was at school and I thought it was the best thing ever happened because um, I was at Seraph in high school then and yeah. um, obviously around the corner at Camelltown Stadium and like, watching them play the Grand Final was against the Dragons was the best thing, so... Um, but forwards, yeah, mate, I can name, yeah. yeah. I was lucky enough I got to play my first year against Paul Harrigan, um, which was, yeah, again, you know, growing up watching those kind of players play and then suddenly yeah. I'm I'm lining up against him trying to rip his head off, but he's trying to do the same and I'm pretending... Well, you're about the same I'm, size. I'm trying to pretend that I'm not terrified, but, um, yeah. you know, so... Oh, look, there's so many I can I can rattle yeah. off probably another, yeah. another 10 on, uh, after that. All right. Uh, not a mag Western Suburbs Magpies player or a West Tigers player, Um Who's the best you've seen? The best player you've seen in the game? One player? Yep. Oh, that's, you, you asked me with Sheens, it's too yeah. hard. Are you going to sit on the same fence I'm and get splinters on the same, in your backside? I am, because I agree with Sheens. Butt. I am. I'm going to sit my broken button with the Sheens oh, because you're, talk, you're talking what position, different era, different rules, different game, yeah, everything. Yeah, but Sheens, he's a coach, right? So he doesn't want... And I'm a player and I, and I follow Sheens' lead because I think it's the same. You can't... To pick one player out of I played. It's going to be a headline. Sheen says Thurston I, was better than John's. The scandals. You I, can pull any name I out. I played ninety six to two thousand ten, and through those years, I the, the game changed so many times. Tell me, so our, our producer Cameron, mate, who's the best player you've seen play the game? Because I can't get an answer out of our guests. <laughs> Yeah, oh, see, it's, it's just so hard. I can Jeez. if you give me five players, I'll give you five players that I've seen. Lucky enough to see. Well, I asked you for the best you've seen. Which, oh. how many? One or one? You just said one player. One. I just want the best you've seen. Can't, I can't. Can't do it. Okay, righto, righto. No. You're I'll... not going to get an answer of anyone out of that. Because they all, because you can say Jonathan Thurston, but before that was Andrew Johns, but before that was... Alfie. Yeah, but now you're talking all halfbacks. What about the front rowers? What about the back rowers? What about... Uh, all the hard work. What about though. Gareth Ellis? Oh, you said no. No. What about... Um, Which player? What about Steve Menzies, who's the second leading try scorer of all time? 
the beaver. Why Why wouldn't he be better than... He could be. You could say Steve Menzies is the best you've ever seen. Oh, I'm going to say Steve Menzies. Best player you have ever seen. <laughs> yeah. There it is. We got one. <laughs> beaver. <laughs> I'm going Beaver. You could have said Benji. That would have been an easy, easy but one. But you said West Tiger. You know West Tigers. Oh, I did too. Yeah. I'm glad you've got a good memory. <laughs> Righto. Beaver gets it. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Did love watching Beaver. Yeah, he was great. What about that sign on the hill? Love, I love Beaver. Yeah. I don't have good memories of Beaver and Cliff Lyons playing. I played against oh, them when they were Oh, just magicians. Early. Those two. Where he was, Cliffy. Mate, they just scored 100 tries in one day against us. It was the longest 80 minutes I'd ever played. Cliffy was Benji before Benji. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And finally, can you recall what is the best game John Scandalis ever played? Is it one day it all clicked? One day it all clicked. Best game. Um, uh, tough one. Yeah, that is a tough one. Or, or your team. I have to say, I played against the game and it shows in a couple of highlights, only because I see the highlights sometimes. And, um, I was just lucky to find the pass. I guess one I was against the Bulldogs. We beat them fifty-four. Was it fifty-four? Was it the close one? I can't remember if we actually flogged them or it was the one where we beat them by one point. Um, that was probably yeah. I, I was involved in a fair, fair, fair few of the tries there somehow, either passing or whatever. Yeah. So not directly. I I helped, but I was involved in somewhere. So, but I guess just my all-around game was good. So that's probably one I can think of. Well, to be honest, we won both those games against the Bulldogs. Let's hope that happens this weekend, right? Exactly. Yeah. Back at Belmore. Um, Fingers crossed for that. Can I throw one more in for, from me? Sure. Before we wrap up and sure. say say goodbye. Who's the biggest pest you've played with or against? Oh, that's easy. Daniel Fitzhenry. Again? Yeah. I like going out with him, but he was also a pest too. So, <laughs> And I think you, if you ask anyone who played in the, between 04 yeah. and 06 with him, they'd probably say the same. Well, absolutely. All right. Yeah. Daniel Fitzhenry, if you're listening or watching, mate. Yeah, um, yeah. Hello. Pest. Yeah. Scando, thanks for joining us, mate. It's been no great worries. to chat to you on uh, Behind the Raw. Uh, be sure to get in touch, check out all the socials um, and send us through questions from the crowd. Do that DM us on Insta. Um, so until next week, same time, same place. Good luck this weekend to the boys at uh, Belmore against the Bulldogs. Show your stripes. Behind the Raw, the official podcast of West Tigers.